We had a rating shocker this week. Not only did NXT beat AEW in the overnight numbers for the first time since April 15th, they creamed them by a wide margin. Over 150,000 viewers. But what's worse for AEW isn't so much that NXT won. I mean, look, I, I like seeing both shows do well. But AEW dropped a lot. In the span of one week, they fell by nearly 140,000 viewers to the lowest rating the show has ever done in the history of the show. And NXT was up around 40,000 viewers from the week before. AEW was also down a whopping 21% in the oh-so-coveted 18-49 to demo, although they did still beat NXT in that, so I guess that's a, a small victory for them. Uh, the interest just wasn't there for AEW this week. NXT won all but one of the quarters, which came in hour one. That was it. AEW got trounced in the main event, 852,000 to 552,000. So people were far more interested in the North American title triple threat match than they were Chris Jericho in a talking segment with Blood Orange Cassidy. And no, I, I don't, because I got a lot of messages about this. I don't believe it had anything to do with Sammy Guevara being suspended and people protesting by saying, oh, I'm not going to watch Dynamite. 140,000 viewers, you mean to tell me that 140,000 viewers tuned out because Sammy Guevara wasn't on the show? Give me a break. Give me a break. They were not into what they saw this week, plain and simple. Or they were just that much more interested in what was going on on NXT, which, and I'll get to NXT in a, in a, in a second here. I thought it was a good show, but I mean, <laughs> main event aside, it wasn't like there wasn't that much interesting stuff on NXT. So uh, it was very interesting to see the disparity between the numbers this week. Now we head into these next two weeks of head-to-head -head combat. And anyone who doesn't think that it's combat is being naive. With AEW spreading its Fighter Fest event over these next two weeks, all of a sudden NXT announces two weeks of the Great American Bash. This will be the first time WWE is using the full name, not the Bash, the Great American Bash. I believe the first time since 2008. I think I was at that show at the Nassau Coliseum. I think that was the last time uh, that they used the full name. So they're resurrecting it this year. And yes, the Bash is back. Just in time to compete with Fighter Fest, which is smart. I don't fault them for doing it at all. I would do the same thing if I were Triple H. How am I going to counter-program against these people? They're building these next two weeks up like a pay-per-view. I have to do the same thing. What can I do to compete? This was their answer. Now, I know they're they're basing it around the Independence Day theme. It is July 4th coming up next weekend. But we know why they're doing it this way. <laughs> and competition is a beautiful thing. It motivates everybody to do better. I see absolutely nothing wrong with what NXT is doing. Like I said, I would do the same exact thing, but don't be naive. There's only one reason why this is going on. Sasha Banks has issued a challenge to the NXT Women's Champion, Io Shirai, on social media to a match on Wednesday. That's night one of the Great American Bash. So NXT is not playing around. They are going for the jugular. After taking a, a back seat on television for so long, finally, these last like several weeks, they're feeding big matches to Sasha Banks. More television time for her. I just felt like she was so de-emphasized for so long. So much better than what they had her doing. You know, I'm digging the whole slow burn to the story with her and Bayley. They're the women's tag team champions. But now, you know, we're getting Io Shirai against Sasha Banks this week. We're getting Asuka against Sasha Banks at Extreme Rules. Now, Bayley says that she's going to be there with Sasha on Wednesday night. So, uh, my prediction, I'm going to make a prediction is that we get a non-finish, we get a DQ finish in this match with Asuka being the one to make the save. I, I threw this out there on Twitter yesterday afternoon. DQ finish, Asuka makes the save. That then sets up Asuka and Io to team up to take on Sasha and Bailey the following week on week two of the Great American Bash. So you get two weeks worth of being able to use these women on TV. And at the same time, you're also building up the Sasha-Asuka match 
for extreme rules. Now, also on Wednesday, night one of the Abash, we have a four-way number one contenders match. Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, Tegan Knox, and Dakota Kai against one another. The winner coming out of it will be the number one contender for the NXT Women's Championship. They will challenge Io Shirai for the title. I don't think they've announced the date on when that title match will be. I would hold off until whenever the next TakeOver special is going to be. But I guess if they were to do the match on week two of the Great American Bash, then there goes my there goes my tag team idea with Asuka and Io. So we'll see how that plays out. And Roderick Strong on Wednesday will battle Dexter Loomis in the first ever strap match in NXT history. Then the following week, it's winner take all. For the NXT Championship and the NXT North American Championship, Adam Cole defends against Keith Lee. Keith Lee defends against Adam Cole. Keith Lee won a triple threat match this past week to earn the right to go on to challenge Adam Cole. Which brings us to this week's NXT show. But before I get to the show, there are a lot of rumors floating around about the Velveteen Dream and his status with the company. Velveteen Dream did not appear on this week's NXT show, although I think he was in the in the uh, in the ad I saw for the Great American Bash, but he was not on the show this week. What we do know, because there was news on Velveteen Dream late in the week. What we do know is that he was involved in a car accident on Friday that sent him to the hospital. He has since been released. We don't know the extent of his injuries, if he's injured. If he was released from the hospital, it couldn't have been that serious. I don't know the circumstances around the accident. It could have been a normal fender bender or there could be something else going on here that points to a larger problem because there's been a lot of cryptic things being said by people who would know about the Velveteen Dream. The car accident may be the least of his problems. More allegations, of course, came out recently of, shall we say, inappropriate social media behavior. I briefly mentioned it last week, but we don't know anything more than that. WWE has been very mum on all of the Velveteen Dream stuff, going back to the initial allegations many, many weeks ago. People thought, well, you know, stuff came out. Obviously, it was fake. These people were exposed. We don't know that. We don't know that it was it was determined to be fake. Then new allegations pop up. Now there's a lot of very cryptic talk going on about Velveteen Dream. Something's going on here, and it's not good. The Matt Men Wrestling Podcast posted a tweet that they were told by two different sources, two different people. That Velveteen Dreams days in the WWE are numbered. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com, he backed that up. That he has heard something similar. That's not good. I don't know if that has to do with the allegations. I don't know if there's some other issue going on here. But as of this recording on Sunday, he is still employed by WWE. By the time I come back on here next Sunday with you again... Who knows if that's still going to be the case. So I don't really want to say too much more than that because we just don't know. I got a lot of thoughts on on Velveteen Dream and if if this goes south. I mean, if it goes the way that it seems like it may be going, he will go down as one of the biggest wastes of potential, I think, in the history of that company. Not the biggest, but I think he'd be up there. And I hope that what I'm hearing and what I'm reading about him, especially with the allegation stuff, it's disgusting. I hope it's not true, but if it is, then he's got to go. And what a waste that would be. And I wonder if all of this might help explain why he did not win the championship from Adam Cole when it seemed as if he was primed and ready to be the one to take the title from Cole. Cole's already, you know, blasted past Finn Balor's record. He's the longest reigning NXT champion of all time. What more is left for Adam Cole to do? And he just straight up beat the Velveteen Dream. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. Maybe now it's all coming into focus on why that happened. Dream had, he had cooled off even before that match. He had cooled off a lot recently. I mean, the pandemic has not done him any favors. He is, he is somebody who I think feeds off that audience reaction. 
So that was a big part, I think, of why he felt like he had been uh, cooled off. But really, ever since he came back from that back injury, he just has not been the same. But this stuff is far more serious than any injury he may have had. So I'm going to reserve uh, more thoughts on this until we see how things play out this week. But it ain't looking too good.